Hi everyone, welcome to The Voice of My Ancestors. So I get this question a lot of how to distinguish or recognize the voice of our ancestors when we're working in, in family history work. And so I thought I'd put together a short little video to uh, explain some of the processes and things that I found that really help in, in doing this. So um, many of us have received uh, personal ministrations from uh, close family members who we knew in mortality, and we can usually recognize them very handily. Um, we might recognize their voice or their mannerisms or, or different things that, that key us into who they were. Um, and and uh, when they minister to us, uh, we can recognize them. And so a lot of this deals with the discover, gather, and connect. Uh, the power of this process in family history work is, is crucial. So um, uh, the, the church's process changed back in 2017 or 2018. Um, it used to be find, take, teach, uh, and now it's discover, gather, connect, and, and it really has a lot of power behind it. So the first process is to discover your ancestors in new and meaningful ways. And so um, I, I didn't know quite where to start. I was called as a stake uh, Temple and Family History Consultant and this, this new program was rolling out and they just kind of said, run with it. And <laughs> I, I didn't know where to run with it. And so um, uh, somebody taught me about the power of discovering our ancestors who already have had their work done, uh, namely our, our four generation ancestors. So I was thinking about it and trying to choose one and I couldn't choose which ancestor I wanted to discover or gather or connect with. And so um, I'm gonna kind of go through my process of, of what I did to, to hone in on one and to actually go through that, that discovery process. So choosing an ancestor can, can be kind of difficult, but don't make it too complicated, uh, especially for your first one. Um, try to rely on the spirit as much as you can. You might get lots of conflicting voices and thoughts and, and feelings. Um, but that's what this whole thing is, is trying to teach us, um, how to distinguish uh, the voice of our ancestors, uh, which ancestor is, is trying to, to find and connect with us. So pull up family search, and here we have a fan chart. Um, and, um, uh, you know, sometimes that, that's daunting in and of itself. Which one do I choose? Uh, don't try to focus on, on seven generations or anything. Just focus on your four generation chart here. And um, in family search, you can toggle between uh, sources and stories and photos, etc. So let's go ahead and do that. So if we go down to the sources, we can see that uh, my four generation has lots of sources um, throughout the, the pedigree. So that doesn't quite help us, but it might help you. If there's only one that has a lot of sources, pick that one. Let's go to photos next. So that one helps me narrow it down a little bit more. So we have George and Martha, Leo, Harvey and Sarah and Grant. Um, so any of those would be a great one to, to get started on. You wanna pick somebody that has lots of sources and stories and photos so that you can actually start discovering them. Now, you know, that, that's different from actual family history uh, work and research when you're trying to find uh, sources and photos for those that don't have them. That, that's a different process altogether. Let's stick with the ones that have the most. So um, next we'll go to stories and that really um, narrows the, the field down here. So in family search, uh, we have George, Ruby, Leo, and Sarah that have a few stories. They're the, the ones that have the most in there. So that's a, a really good indicator. We kind of ruled out Ruby because she doesn't have as many photos as the others do. So the, the photos for um, George, Leo, and Sarah would be great. So the next step is either to just pick one of those three, which one you know the least about. Think about it. Uh, do I know anything, any facts about George? Do I know anything about Leo or Sarah, etc.? cetera? Um, this one kind of narrowed it down to George and Leo for me. Uh, I knew a lot about Sarah Darrington, and so um, it kind of went down to George and Leo. So I needed a tiebreaker. And that's where Compareface comes in. So in Family Search, the Compareface feature matched me with Leo 87%. And I, I looked at that picture 
oh my goodness, that looks exactly like me. Maybe not in this photo of me, but in some of my teenage years, uh, even after high school, um, uh, that, that's my face. Uh, even my hair is, has always been dumb and <laughs> I, I try to be a, uh, a weirdo with my hair. So I, I figured, you know, that's, that's good enough for me. I'm gonna try to connect with Leo. I know little about him other than that people called him Cookie Grandpa. Uh, but I didn't even know why. And that's it. I, I think that he lived in Malta, but I, I didn't know anything about him. So that's the ancestor that I chose. And if you want to go through a similar process, go through your, your four generation fan chart and, and find an ancestor to discover. Um, one that has lots of stories and sources and photos, but one that you know the least about. Um, that's a great place to start, but you can do this anywhere in, in the family tree. So the first thing is discovering. This discover phase is going to take a long time. Uh, for me, it took a, a couple months of really diving in. And um, there was one week that I focused on it very heavily to try to, because um, I had to prepare a talk for sacrament meeting and I really wanted to jam this all into one week. Um, so that's where um, the, the Lord loves effort. And uh, the, the more time and, and effort we can put into discovering our ancestors, uh, the more benefits and uh, blessings that we're going to, to see as a result. So in this discover phase, um, one of the presentations at Roots Tech was talking about um, take an action or a verb or a sense and, and do it with your ancestor. So walk where they walk see what they saw, feel what they felt, taste what they tasted, etc. Uh, pick something and do it with them. And so my first one was to walk where they walked. I used this website, showmystreet.com and Google Maps to uh, look at the place where he was born, his address. Um, all of that was, was a little ways away from me and I wanted to do this all in a week. I didn't have time to, to plan an extracurricular trip or anything. Uh, he did spend a lot of his life in my hometown, so I was able to do those. But where he was born, I used a virtual service to, to do that for me. So walk where they walked throughout their whole life, where they were born, where they grew up. Uh, maybe they, they stayed in the same town their whole life, but uh, look at all the different aspects of their or the different uh, ages. Where were they at when they were a single adult? Did they serve a mission? Walk the streets of their mission. Uh, where were they married? Where did they spend most of their life when they were growing their uh, kids or uh, when they were old and retired or and even where they uh, passed away or buried? <clears throat> so here is my experience with Leo. So there's a little tidbit in uh, his history written by his posterity that talks about his first house here in the Malta Valley. And so it talks about this railroad grade and that, um, that it's, he, they settled two miles below the grade on the eight mile, six mile road. So I, I took my mom uh, out with me because she said that she had visited the place a couple of times when she was younger and she thinks she could probably recognize it or, you know, she's my best bet. And so um, I, we, we headed off uh, one afternoon to, to find this place. And um, so we went on this road, we found the, the railroad grade and traveled two miles back and uh, just kind of started looking, but it's sagebrush for miles. And so um, we're, we're reading uh, this part of the history as we're, we're there in the place. Uh, it talks about this 72 foot well on the place that um, Mr. Golightly helped Leo uh, dig. And uh, it was dug by hand with the, the men shoveling dirt and then lifting it out with a winch. And um, anyway, so that's all we knew. We knew that there was the railroad grade two miles back and that there was a well there. Now, the chances that a well would still be there after all these years is, is slim to none, but you know, we're, we're still looking um, and uh, we drove up and down that road a million times. <laughs> we couldn't find it. Um, we, my mom thought for sure that it was on this side of the road. Um, but uh, again, we, we just didn't know. And so we prayed. Uh, never forget the power of prayer in this process. And so we prayed and said, Heavenly Father, please send Leo to us to help guide us to this spot. We really want to connect and, and discover 
where this house was and, and even possibly where this well was. And so we just started driving and uh, before you knew it, we both said stop. At the same time, we, were, we just felt something. We, we, we didn't know what, but we just felt. And so we got out and, and started <laughs> hunting through the, the sagebrush, like a couple of Looney Tunes out there in the, the middle of the flats. And so um, we're walking around and I, I mean, sure, maybe, I mean, there's, there's lots of little clearings and, and things in the, in the sagebrush, but, but is this really the place? And then we found the well. So um, we were looking at this and going, what the heck is this huge, deep cavern here that's, that's kind of wet? Um, there's a huge log nearby that was was clearly in the middle of it, kind of worn from, from what looked like could be a rope with a bucket on the end of it. Um, it, it looked about the right size if, if it was going to be that deep, that it would be about that circumference. Um, and so we were really excited. Um, we, were, we just kind of looked at each other going, is this really it? Is this the, the well that he's talking about in his history? Is that why his history even mentions the well so that we right now could find it and connect with Leo. And then an overwhelming sense of, um, of pride and accomplishment washed over me. And it, it wasn't a, a pride and accomplishment of finding the well, it was a pride and accomplishment of digging the well, which surprised me. I, I, I didn't know quite how to put it into words or describe it, but later, uh, come to find out when I'm, I'm trying to process all of this information and, and feelings is that Leo was sharing with me through proxy his, his, his feelings at the time that, that he dug this well. And, and by so doing, I was able to connect with him. I was able to connect with his memories and his feelings and sentiments as he had, had stood over this, uh, this accomplishment that, that he dug this well with Mr. Golightly there. And so those are the geo coordinates of this well. And uh, we shared those with our family afterwards so that anyone can go and, and find this exact spot uh, in the future. And so as we were rummaging around through uh, the sagebrush there, uh, there's kind of a clearing um, uh, just to the, the south and west of, of that well. And it, there's this plate, this, this broken shard of a big dinner plate and I cannot tell you how many, how much joyful tears I've shed over this little shard of a plate. Um, it was amazing. It was just like a confirming witness that yes, this is the homestead. You know, there's there's this big hole in the ground, and and I felt um, a connection there. But it wasn't until I found this shard that it was like, this has got to be it. This is this is probably one of the dinner plates that he ate off of. Um, when, when they lived here. They didn't live there for long, but anyway, it was just a, a very connecting experience out in the middle of nowhere a, in, in, here in Malta, the place where I've grown up my whole life. I'd just never been there, uh, never taken the time to discover Leo in this way. So the next thing that I decided I wanted to do was taste what he tasted. And so um, uh, this is, this is an excellent way to connect with ancestors because many of our uh, uh, close relatives, we, we have either recipes that are theirs that they invented or that they really liked. Or uh, sometimes if you can't find a recipe of your ancestors, you might just have to go to a common cuisine of their, their birth country or um, uh, ask around to, to your other family members. What, what do you guys like to eat? Is that what grandpa used to eat kind of thing? Uh, ask around it. It's, it's very enlightening um, how we can connect through food. Um, so Leo's recipes, uh, I'd always heard that he was called Cookie Grandpa, but I did not know or did not associate fudge with, with Grandpa Leo. Um, but anytime that I asked people about Leo's favorite foods or, or treats or anything, everybody always said fudge. Uh, Leo's fudge was, was where it was at. And then I got thinking, have I ever had Leo's fudge? I I, I must have missed the memo. I, I never associated that at all uh, with with family or anything. And so I decided to to hunt down his recipe and, and, and make it. I asked around and nobody seemed to have the recipe. Um, they all remembered it. They all remembered that it was great, but um, 
I don't know, throughout the years, it, it just got lost. It got abandoned. Um, and so I, I was kind of disheartened, but I was like, I'm, I'm just going to make fudge and, and it, just do my best with it. And so throughout perfecting the recipe, oh my gosh, I made so many batches of fudge, you guys. But as I, I first tasted uh, one of my uh, batches of fudge that, that actually turned out, it's amazing the connection, the feelings that again, I, I was feeling through Leo, almost by proxy um, uh, of, of tastes, of remembrances, of um, uh, a time long gone. And uh, further on in, in his history, he, he mentions uh, a drink that he would always make with a little bit of vinegar and, and water and then some baking soda to make it fizzy. And, and that was his uh, uh, vinegar fizz uh, that he called it. Anyway, uh, lots of different things mentioned in there. Um, maybe some of your, your ancestors' histories don't mention food, but if they do, this is a great way to connect. The next is to see what they saw, uh, walk around where, where they used to, to walk, uh, find pictures and videos. If you can find a video of your ancestor whom you've never met um, and, and get to see their mannerisms and things, it can just open your mind and to, to new vistas. Uh, videos are, are a gold mine, but that, that might be rare, especially if they're, they're older. Find photos of them. And if not of them, photos that they might have handled or seen or um, just see what they saw. Uh, try to, to, to do visual uh, connections with your ancestors. The next is to, to discover and feel what they felt. Uh, you can take that in lots of different directions and that's what's great about this, this whole process. Um, feeling what they felt and it does feeling what their desires are, what um, they experience. Uh, ask around and uh, do an interview with your uh, living, um, uh, their living posterity and ask them like, what kind of cologne did they used to, to wear or, or perfume? Or did they have any mannerisms or tics that have been passed down to any of their posterity? So like, um, what if your uh, what if, like my mom, what if she did something that was very similar to what Leo did? Go and observe and, and kind of see that, that, that characteristic, that mannerism, that, that special tick that, that makes them them. And um, just kind of, I don't know, live vicariously through, through their posterity there. Uh, feeling what they felt is huge. So looking at Leo's pos uh, personality well, was key throughout his photos. You can see uh, lots of different... Um, mannerisms and, and things kind of present themselves in photos. Um, but one of the, the great new features is deep nostalgia with the My Heritage app. You can actually animate a still photo into a video, uh, as you can see here. There's a few different animations that you can choose from. Some of them are kind of creepy. Some of them are more realistic. Um, but whatever you choose, uh, animate those and share them with your family and friends that knew your ancestor and ask them, does this look like kind of what, how Leo would move or act or anything? And uh, see if you can kind of peg any um, mannerisms there. I, I find it very interesting to, to use that, that deep nostalgia feature. Uh, the next thing is to discover them by reading what they wrote. Uh, this is huge. Not every ancestor, I, I, in fact, it's kind of rare. Um, uh, with Leo, I, I've read his history lots of times, but I, I never uh, found anything that was written by him or in voice or anything. Um, but then one day, uh, I stumbled across this little handwritten paragraph that I'll never forget. So he, it was one of the only things he ever wrote down that, that I've been able to find. And in his own handwriting, he told of an experience where he was alone in his house and uh, at night he had an experience with the other side um, with, with a dark, uh, dark force and uh, uh, demons as he called them, um, that they were trying to drag him down to hell and uh, take over his body, etc. He, he raised his right arm to the square and cast them out and um, testified in this paragraph 
of the power of the priesthood and keeping his covenants that he was able to do this. And as I read that, it connected with my soul so deeply. I, I wasn't expecting to, to find anything written by him, but more than that, it was um, a deeply connecting experience that, that me and him shared. On my mission, I had a similar experience. And um, I, I, when I read this paragraph, uh, he, he whispered to me and, and said, do you remember that angel that helped you through it? That was me. I was sent because I had experienced something similar and, and I was to help you through that. And I, I, I can't even tell you what this discovery process did for me in connecting with Leo was huge and monumental. To know that uh, our ministry and angels are active in our lives, even when we don't recognize their names or, or recognize who, who is coming and ministering to us. Nevertheless, they are, and, and I testify of that with, with all my heart, that I know that ministering angels are, are sent, and many of them are our family members. But is it important to recognize specifically who and when they are ministering to us? I believe so, especially in, in family history work. And so um, looking at, at his experiences and, and taking that and connecting with him in a deeper way, uh, looking at, at things that we share, um, request ancestors' patriarchal blessings, um, compare the, the different spiritual gifts and blessings that are promised to both you and them, and, and see if there's any similarities. Are any of the, the traits and blessings passed down? And then visit them often. Uh, you know, this, this kind of seems weird, but I, I find that it's been huge and uh, very influential in my connection with Leo. Uh, visit the grave often. Uh, it, you know, it, it's here close. It's in the same town that I live in, but uh, visit their grave. Even if you have to go to findagrave.com or, or Billion Graves, that look at their headstone, communicate with them that way. That's, that's their final resting place and, until the resurrection. Um, ask in prayer if you can communicate directly with them. Talk with them. Uh, see if, if they're needing to communicate any information to you uh, regarding family history or otherwise. Uh, ask Heavenly Father if they can visit you in a dream or vision. Um, there, there's many special choice experiences that you can have through, um, through dreams and visions with our ancestors. Uh, another thing is uh, if you're having difficulty with any of those and, and really having a hard time even uh, getting to that point, oh, the Lord just doesn't work with me that way. Take some time and, and meditate. Really push out all distractions and uh, visualize them in front of you and, and have a conversation with them. Uh, there, there's many blessings to be had through the power of visualization and, and asking Heavenly Father if he will grant that to you. And then comes the gather process. So after we've discovered our ancestors to the fullest um, it's time to, to start scrapbooking and, and gathering their information, collect all of their marriage certificates and birth certificates and census records and all of that, um, pictures. One thing that I did was ask all of uh, his grandkids and well, anybody that I could find, um, do you have any heirlooms or artifacts or hand-me-downs from Grandpa Leo? And if you could just take a picture of him and send me uh, that picture along with any memories that you might have of him. Um, so that I can uh, put those on family search. And so what I did was create this digital scrapbook really um, in family search of all the pictures. We found this uh, old wallet with different things, a suitcase, uh, lots of little knickknacks, um, many different uh, precious little uh, things. Uh, his pearl of great price with his little spectacles. Um, anyway, it just, those were little tender, um, experiences, collecting each and every one of those and, and uploading those to, to family search. Um, but, you know, it, it's a free resource. We can upload pictures on there, uh, following the guidelines of family search, of course, uh, any uh, life histories or, or sketches, newspaper articles about them, funeral programs, obituaries, etc. Great ways to, to gather all that information in there. And when you do um, start connecting all of the um, information together. Uh, make sure that things are standardized. Uh, attach any blue record hints that are, might be out there um, that are coming into to that person. And then start sharing it. 
Uh, there's easy, handy share icons next to, to photos and memories. Uh, share those on Facebook or social media, or even in a text message or email with your family. Um, uh, share what you're doing and what you're collecting and see if they can add to it. Um, that's a, a great way. When you start helping your ancestors connect to your family members, uh, dead or living, uh, it, it brings great blessings and you'll start recognizing their voice a lot in, in family history. And then comes just kind of the, the ultimate part of it, full-time missions. Um, they become our companions in the sense where we go on full-time missions. Uh, we're just working on different sides of the veil is all. We're working with the records and the book of life here on, on this side, and they're working and uh, teaching and, and bringing others to Christ on the other side of the veil. Sometimes it's our, our own family members. Sometimes it's, it's just different lands that they are called to proselyte to. But as we, we take our commission seriously to uh, do temple and family history work with our kindred dead, not alone, it's not a, a solo effort. The Holy Spirit is involved, of course. But as we start coming to recognize the voice of our ancestors, we can hear their voice and their, their attitude and their mannerisms when, when they come to us in dreams or visions or um, in, in quiet promptings when we're on the computer. Um, there's many times that, that Leo comes and says, hey, I, I've been teaching this person. I need you to go find their, their birth date because they're, they're ready to get baptized. And I, before you know it, I, I found their information. And uh, in Grandpa Leo's uh, little mannerisms, I, I can, um, can hear his excitement in his voice when, when he, he says thank you. Um, I, sometimes I visualize him uh, opening up his old saltine cracker box and, and giving me one of his oatmeal cookies out of it um, uh, as, as a thank you. Uh, there's many uh, awesome experiences, too many to even count or share, but um, I, I testify uh, with, with all my heart. The Temple and Family History work is um, one of the greatest blessings that this dispensation has to, to grow, to learn, to, to hear him, to connect with our ancestors and, um, and enact the sealing power that, that we enter into in holy uh, spaces. I'm so grateful for uh, the opportunity to connect with Leo and many of my other ancestors through some of these uh, simple ideas. Um, again, the Lord loves effort and uh, it takes time to to dive in and, and care about a person, to show them that love and, and have it reciprocated. Um, I, I hope that all of you will um, take the time to at least connect with one of your ancestors this week and uh, get working on this. This is an amazing work to be involved in and it, it really does pull down the blessings of heaven to bless not only us, but our posterity and, and our ancestors as we uh, faithfully um, spend the time uh, connecting. It, it heals what needs to be healed. It saves what needs to be saved and protects that what needs protected. And I testify of that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have any questions, email me. I'll, I'll put my email in, in the comments below. Thank you. Have a great day.